Elgato Stream Deck versus Touch Portal. Which should you get? Hey, I'm Adam Bombadi, and in this short little video, I'm gonna break down the differences between the Elgato Stream Deck and Touch Portal. I'll go over simple setup, positives and negatives, and hopefully help you decide which will be best for you when it comes to your live streams. I also want to preface this by saying that I'm not sponsored by either, but I wouldn't complain if I got an offer. Let's start off with Elgato Stream Deck because it's the most commonly known between the two. I did a video going into further detail on the Stream Deck way, way long ago. Okay, maybe it was like a year, but that's still a long time ago, and scope of YouTube stuff. It probably sucks now, but go check it out if you want to laugh. The Stream Deck basically acts like a separate hotkey keyboard in which you can set it to do things like turning on and off sources, open and close programs, change scenes, mute mic and desktop audio, and so much more. You assign jobs to the different buttons by using the Stream Deck desktop client, which you can download from their website. There's many integrations with the Stream Deck, such as for Streamlabs, OBS Studio, Twitch, Twitter, XSplit, YouTube, and there's a decently impressive amount of more integrations that you can add for further support from other software. Elgato has different versions of their Stream Deck. There's the original 15 button version, which I have, the XL, which has 32 buttons, and the Mini, which has six. There's also a mobile version of the Stream Deck that unfortunately is on a subscription-based plan. So I believe currently you can do either $2.99 a month or $24.99 for a year. Setup is the same for the mobile version, though you assign the keys based on the desktop client. However, instead of having the physical Stream Deck, you just use your phone instead. To set up your Stream Deck, first plug it into your computer using a USB 2.0 port and install the app from the website. With the app open, if you look to the right, you get basic options and categories depending on what you want to do. If you click on more actions, you can see an even greater list of integrations and much more. One of my favorites are the integrations by Bar Raider, especially OBS tools because it allows you to do things like toggle filters on and off and other really cool things, which the normal default category doesn't have for some reason. To add buttons, all you have to do is drag and drop the function you want and then customize it below so that it targets the right source or scene. You can also switch between different Stream Deck profiles or if you want to stick to the same one, you can create a folder to have even more buttons in a different folder. You can give all of the buttons a name, although it does cut off if it's too long. For each button, it gives a default boring icon, but you can also assign a custom image by clicking on the button, right-clicking on the image of it, and selecting set from file or create new icon. The image can also be a GIF, which looks really cool on the actual physical Stream Deck. Wallpaper mode allows you to use one image and stretch it out over all of your buttons, giving a really cool wallpaper effect. It's very nice looking and once you have one you kind of get that feeling of, yeah, I'm a professional streamer now! And the buttons are really fun to press. The UI for the desktop client is very simple and clean and more importantly, it's very easy to set up the keys, it's super user friendly. It just works. I've had no issues with it disconnecting or with buttons not working. Because it's done by Elgato, you get the quality that comes with a higher name brand. Stream decks aren't cheap. Like I mentioned earlier, the normal 15 button one is around 150 bucks. The six button one, which in my opinion seems like a waste of money, is still around 100 bucks. Also, it's another USB device, so if you're like me and you already have a shit ton of like webcams, microphones, whatever, all of your USB ports are taken, it is going to be another USB device that you're going to have to fit in somehow. I also wish that you didn't have to open up the browser in order to be able to change the icons for the Stream Deck buttons. Currently, if you want to use a more custom icon, even one that Elgato's done, you have to open the browser, view their buttons, download the button, and then upload it through the desktop client. It's not a huge deal, it's just a little bit inconvenient. I feel like there's a better way of doing it. A lot of people argue, can't I just get a keyboard to do the same thing? And the answer is yes, kind of. The Stream Deck saves you from having to configure different hotkeys, which can be a pain in the ass and it's time consuming. The Stream Deck is also a lot more compact and pretty. It fits on your desk a lot easier than it would having another keyboard or part of a keyboard just hanging out on your desk. Note that due to COVID, it's a little bit more difficult to be able to get Stream Decks at the moment. As of this video, they were out of stock on Amazon, but it seems like you can still get them on the official Elgato website through Best Buy, through GameStop or Micro Center. 
Now let's take a look at Touch Portal. Touch Portal's not a physical product, more like a software that you can use both on your desktop and for your phone or tablet. While the base software is free, it only comes with two pages and a limit of eight buttons per page. If you upgrade to their pro version, which is a flat rate of $12.99, you get unlimited number of pages and 110 buttons per page. You can find even more plugins, however, some of them are a little bit more scattered across GitHub and other places. Touch Portal does have its own resource site, which is called Share Portal, where you can find some of the more commonly used beefier plugins and integrations. For initial setup, you'll need to download both the desktop and the mobile apps. You'll need to connect the mobile app to the desktop client via the IP that shows at the bottom of the Touch Portal desktop app. If you're using OBS, you're going to need to download the OBS WebSocket plugin, which I will add a link to in the description below. I don't use Streamlabs OBS, so I don't exactly know how well this works, but I do know that currently Touch Portal only supports the Windows version and we'll add Mac support in the future. The next part can be almost intimidating. What is it that you want to be able to do? Do you want to use it like a regular stream deck for your phone where you can use button toggles to control scenes, sources, audio, etc.? Do you want to give your viewers control of your stream? You can set so many automated systems, like when chat uses a text command, a gif appears, when a raid happens, a video plays, when someone does a channel point redemption, your cameras move around. It would take me forever to go through absolutely everything you can do with Touch Portal and your stream that I'd have to make separate videos for them, and I've made a few, but let me know in the comments below if you want more Touch Portal videos. To actually create a button, you're going to want to hit on one of the blank spaces. Then you'll be greeting by a semi-intimidating looking menu. The first thing you'll see is these three tabs. The on press tab is what you'll use for basic commands like turning on and off scenes. The on event tab is what I use for Twitch automations. And the on hold tab is best for doing things like changing audio levels. So let's make a basic change scene button. You're going to look to the categories on the left. I'm using OBS, so I'm going to expand that. I'm going to click on set scene and then it will add to the current tab that I have selected. Now you're going to want to select the scene that you want the button to change over to. In my instance, we will use just chatting. On the right, you'll see the button settings. Make sure you add a button text or the button will look invisible, naked and sad and we don't want that. Touch Portal is really good about giving you free icons that you don't have to upload separately. Just click on what you want to use and you're all set. You can also add your own icons if you wish and their website offers an extensive number of design options. The base software for Touch Portal is free if you don't need it for more than a couple of buttons. Even the flat rate of $12.99, basically you pay that and you get the program for life. That's still a pretty good deal, in my opinion, for what you get from it. It has incredible Twitch integrations, almost unlimited possibilities. I'm always brainstorming ways in which I can give control to my viewers or make some functions automatic. The included icon packs with Touch Portal are very easy to add to your buttons. You don't have to open up a separate browser in order to do that. You can just click on the icon you want to use from the app itself. With the pro version, you get a lot more space per page. Like I mentioned earlier, you can get up to 110 buttons per page, which is pretty crazy. The UI for Touch Portal is not very pretty. There is some learning curve when it comes to setting up the buttons. You can easily come across analysis paralysis where it's just like there's so many things to do you don't really know where to start. Also, if you plan on using it to replace a stream deck, you're probably going to need to keep your phone plugged in and charged during your whole stream so it doesn't drain your battery. I've also had some issues with the Twitch connection part of Touch Portal. A lot of times I have to reconnect my auth tokens. Sometimes I'll test it out before the stream and then during the stream my things don't work so I've got to reconnect it again. I don't know if this is something that's on Twitch's end or on Touch Portal's end though. Touch Portal wins this one hands down. $150 for the stream deck where you get 15 buttons, well depending on the one you get, or $12.99 for having up to 110 buttons on a page if you want to. Hell, even the Stream Deck mobile app is like $24.99 a year and you'd still have to continue to pay either monthly or yearly after that. It's a little tough to compare this one because Touch Portal has just so many more integration, so many more things going on with it than the Stream Deck. So while Stream Deck definitely has a much simpler, easier to understand setup, drag and drop, assign paths to said button. Touch portal button setup isn't really that difficult once you get the hang of it. That being said, as far as 
initial setup goes, Stream Deck for sure. Basically, plug and play, install the app, and boom. With Touch Portal, you have to get both the desktop and mobile versions to see each other using the same IP, connect via WebSockets if you're using OBS, and use auth tokens for Twitch, which can be a little bit more intimidating for people who aren't as tech savvy. Like I mentioned in the Touch Portal section, there are just so many more direct to stream things that Touch Portal can do versus the Stream Deck. The Stream Deck is very good for button toggle things. So if you want to be able to turn audio off and on, change a scene, turn off and on a source, which Touch Portal can still do all of these things. But Touch Portal also has scripting aspects in a sense where you can string things together like Viewer does X, cause X to happen. Very much if this, then that style. All automatically, no button push is needed. With Elgato Stream Deck, the only way to get more buttons is if you purchase the XL version, which I believe has 32, but that's also gonna be around $250. With Touch Portal, because it's not a physical product, like I mentioned before, you can get up to 110 buttons per page, just like that. The Stream Deck app is a lot more simple and clean looking, a lot less chaotic. Also, the physical Stream Deck itself is just so pretty and you can customize it to make it even prettier. You can do customized buttons with Touch Portal, but it loses that cool effect because with the Stream Deck, they've got that cool 3D effect with the raised buttons. The Stream Deck really satisfying to be able to push an, an actual button and you really get that with this. But I would also say, and maybe this is more personal, I love to come up with solutions for streaming problems and different ways to be able to use it to entertain my viewers with and make everything automatic, but maybe that's just my weird sense of fun. I don't know. Stream Deck! With the Stream Deck, you're limited by the length of the USB cable. Now you can buy USB extension cables to help with that, but still, because Touch Portal can be used on a phone or a tablet, you can basically take it anywhere with you. It's extremely portable. Now I'm making this section very short for my VR live streaming friends. While you could get the Stream Deck mobile app to be used in VR, it's going to be a lot cheaper in the long run to use something like Touch Portal. Either way, you're going to have to use some kind of a phone emulator to get the app into your headset using something like OVR Toolkit because you can't just capture the Stream Deck desktop application itself because the app doesn't allow you to actually perform the action of the buttons. That's just for being able to set the function of what they are. Anyway, I do have a video tutorial up on that and I'll put it somewhere above here so you can click on it and check that out. In the end, I will say that you're going to get more bang out of your buck with Touch Portal versus the Stream Deck. I have both, and I use my Stream Deck when I'm doing my sit-down non-VR gaming streams, but I still have Touch Portal running on the background to do some of the automatic things that the Stream Deck can't. Let me know what's your favorite between the two in the comments below, and if you ever have even heard of Touch Portal before outside of this channel. You can see all of my Stream Deck and Touch Portal goodness in action through my Channel Point Redemptions or through sub rewards on my Twitch channel. I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 6pm Pacific. I've also moved my merch door. I don't know if I've even mentioned that I have a merch door before on my YouTube channel, but I have one and it's moved. You can find a link to it in the description below and if you use code ADAMFRIEND at checkout you can get 20% off on anything in the store currently. And just a heads up, there might be some really cool VR themed stuff coming up ahead, so make sure you keep an eye out for that. Anyway, as always, keep on creating and never lose that drive to improve. I'll see you on the next one. Dream Jake is...